and welcome to the final part of the Farewell My Turn of Arc. Ah, how did I get into this mess? That's far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What, what have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. But I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. I've had this dream before someplace. Some As if this day was written into my destiny. Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer to prove a killer innocent. Matt on guard in the previous video revealed that he was behind everything. Hello, this is Venus Wright. You don't see look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict too. Now listen up, you better get on guard the guilty sentence, okay? Get a creepy sunburn up you. I'll never forgive you ever. Maya. Phoenix. Phoenix. Mia. Maya. How's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to charm me since yesterday. Mia, what? What am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times is when you have to force your figures and smiles. But. but can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. Ah, oh, it's like cursed on God again. Will you leave me alone? Look, I don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. Gunshot, I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? They let me join the investigation team and we're chasing after the killer, pal. Then you have some sort of lead. Sorry, but right now we got zero leads on the guy. We're not gonna give up. Come show. Until the trial is over, until the verdict is handed down, we're gonna do everything we can and find the killer. If we can get Moyer out, then you can get on guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that, so you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer. If you want Mr. Edgeworth with everything you got, then you two can draw it out. And now I get it. We well, believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, believe in us. We're going to give it all we got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix, you understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world and you have it in abundance. Yeah. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Them sure will come through. I know it. Court is now in session for the trial of Maton Guard. Defence is ready, Your Honour. Prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honour. Now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being, what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the cause of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. On Guard and then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. Guilty these actions are those from which she cannot escape. I mean, you're saying that she's guilty after all. Well, I'm not finished, Your Honour. 
and his injuries has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? I shall. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. Assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Carida was killed by a professional assassin, and the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matangal. What's probably turn of events? I think it's become more commonplace by now, Your Honour. I know what's going on this time, so I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true. We still have to hold on as long as we can, at least until Maya is safe and sound. I will now the trial will turn on today. Now then, please saw your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Now then, witness your name and occupation, please. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what's your relation to the defendant? Well, that's, I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Powers, please, don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, sorry, well, I'm just kind of nothing, this old guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Yes. I didn't know that. Uh, but you know, I didn't actually get to see what when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Matt on guard's room. Okay, sure. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone. First of all, it was a bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm, nothing sounds out of place to Mr. Power's testimony. And talking with the bellboy is no big deal. When it seems that the person Mr. Rongard was speaking with was as an ordinary bellboy, what are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Uh, a trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're going to have to charge in head first, right? Defendant's room, why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother sort of, and I want to say congrats. What's well, wrong? Why did you stop? Mr. Wright! What is it? You, you're going to try to trick me into a coin, aren't you? Huh? I, I know I'm just a poor, underpaid action star, but, but I, I'm not the killer. Um, no one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Every time? Witness! I will personally talk to defence at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. Sorry. So you want to defend that you're in there? Hey, wait a minute. When and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? Matt was standing there in front of his room, still his nickel son. All the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant together, were correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I just feel something going weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? Well, that's a perfectly normal thing to do. So, how did you watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. First, what do you mean by that? I don't think he was a normal bellboy. And why is that? Um, why do I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to wait, wait a second? Actually, Mr. Powers, a few minutes ago you stated. Um, you know, I do feel something weird. I think it's because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. 
Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip giving instant itself? Oh, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. You mean, Mr. Adra? Yes, Your Honor. This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean by the bellboy? Right. Mark gave the bellboy a tip. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Oh, you see, that's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? Last when something even more surprising happened. Bubba was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Mm, I'm afraid I don't feel at all. Sounds like Mr. Powers. Surprised twice by this event. What's this shocking moment do I ask about? The defendant is a huge star, you can afford to give generous tips when you agree. Well, I'm sure, but giving him that much is maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court how much you would say the defendant gave to the bar boy? Honestly, I don't know. Who would we give to guess? And why is that? You give the bar boy a really, really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash? Ah, oh, wow, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? Very fat roll of cash, that can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Hmm, judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. The defendant is a superstar. That kind of tip is a typical fare for people like him. Are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays. Why on earth would I be standing around here prosecuting? Got a point, I didn't even get paid better loan rolls to cash all my hard work. Hmm, so I suppose that royal cash was our tip. And what was it? Payment, your honour. Payment? Isn't it obvious for the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida? Then, then the bellboy the witness saw? Yes, he was the assassin. Hold your horses and how much time to work. You don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honour? I have here the card Shelley Dukiller left at the scene of the crime. Shelley Dukiller? He is the person the police and special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelley Dukiller. Really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, oh, nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh. Actually, I saw that bellboy nature again that night. What? <laughs> Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. This time I was in the hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. That's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Parkerita's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... Thank you very much, that is all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done, there's still more. Let us first start that the bellboy was truly Mr. D. Killer. Then we shall say... Hmm, I'm sure the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin... And I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha, 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 ha. There's no laughing matter. Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, 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 right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's going to say next. Uh, well, the bellboy was empty hundred. Empty hundred? The bellboy was one of the room service people, right? 
but he wasn't pushed to class, he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm, I agree, that is a little bit strange, Mr. Powers. Is it really that unusual for Barbara to be empty handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers test him any side or. There is nothing strange or unusual about an empty handed power boy. There really, really is. There really, really isn't. If you two are done being school children, power boys are for room service. No reason for them to be empty handed, ever. Your Honour, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Ah, oh, Are you going to do whatever you can to make the bell boy look suspicious? I see, very well. The court recognises and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Yes, sir. I thought it was kind of strange for a bellboy to come out of the guest room empty handed. So you're saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty handed? Yeah, I'm really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy. He was holding a tray in his hand, and there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice, what kind of juice was it? Uh, we're pretty sure it's tomato juice. But he came up with some sort of reason as to why he would come out empty handed. Some sort of proof, and I think I'll miss him for now. Proof sounds like a job for the court record. Mr. Powers? Yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that bar boy might have been the killer, you caught up in believing it must have been true. But bad. Isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... So, baseball has stitches. Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Well, there's also, I mean, what about it being empty handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Creed's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner here, anyone can clearly see there is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Creed's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty handed when he left. Ah, but that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. Ah, but he proved Mr. Creed was already dead at the time. Well, Mr. Redworth? Yes? I blame you for leading me down this route. Ha <laughs> ha I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you'd like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty handed, or should I say empty hand is. I recall you had something interesting about his hands. Oh yeah, I was forgot. Huh? What? That bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch back. leather ones. Oops. Why didn't you mention it? Uh. Does this make the ball look really suspicious? I might have to focus on it last here. So what if you had gloves? A lot of bell boys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. That ball boy was wearing black leather ones. So, football is made of leather. You say all footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. Then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think I even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay.
After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene next, went to the defendant's room? Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident, I say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm, I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we, Mr. Wright? Your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. After leaving Juan's office, I said, "Hold it." Um. Okay. That's better. Um. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh. Um. Okay. I should probably ask you only one question at a time. Gave something to this person? Yeah. What was this something? Haha. <laughs> if I remember all the words, I would be calling it something, would I? That implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember us to powers? Um, I think it was something. That'd be a crucial piece of information. Please try to remember what it was. Um, I'll try. In the meantime, let's talk of another point, namely, what the bellboy did next. Oh, so after we gave the person inside the room the thing... And the old guy just... left side. Who took this something the ball boy handed off? Well, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? You're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. I'd like to summarise the testimony at this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As the person received the item, because all you could see was the person's arm. Yeah, yeah, it was just like that. Mr. Radworth, is this all really important? Of course, Your Honor, I think this is of utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Well, well, let's see, I think it was no. Remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. I think I know what this is. Objection. What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, the something you saw, was it this item? Oh hey, that's it. That's the something. Well, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Mount Guard's mansion. The defendant's house? What does this mean? Simple, Your Honor. Shelley to kill it, assassinated his one creature in his room. And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. And the bear being found at Mr. Ongard's much it would mean. It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Ongard is to kill his client. Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, this is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah, sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. Not now, then. It would have later on. If you haven't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edward would have. I almost forgot that you knew about it too. Hmm. I think it's clear that there is no need for us to continue this trial. I I can't let this happen. I have to do something. It has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. 
There's still a few points left that we've not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we don't have that up. Alright, Mr. Wright, what question point would you like? I think it's fairly obvious the bear itself is very questionable. The bear, Mr. Wright? This was found at Mr. Ongard's mansion. However, Mr. Ongard was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Wrong. I think Your Honour has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It's not possible that it was Mr. Ongard who took this bear to the mansion. That's very true, we didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There's no way, time-wise, the defendants have taken this bear home. Disaster averted. Objection! You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at On Guard's mansion. When you have this area completely surrounded, there's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it, that butler. All this time he was Dekiller. Dekiller and On Guard were working together, so to speak, and Dekiller was hiding at On Guard Mansion as his butler. What a bold move. Bear figuring was brought back to On Guard Mansion by Dekiller himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, On Guard had him do so. I seen because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. <laughs> been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Is there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What are you now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to? I plan to expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Power's testimony. What? There's still another one. There is indeed, Your Honour. That's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright. What questionable point? One thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person as well. As long as we don't know who that it was that took the bear. Ah! What is that, Mr. Powers? Are you going to scream like that? Then give us a good reason why. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Um, I remember who took the bear. What? Really? Well, he's saw his arm. But... The arm. It was a knuckle samurai's arm, I swear it. You've got to be kidding! Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was a knuckle samurai. Order, order! It looks like you've been... Dogs like your own grave yet again. How many times that the devil lost count? So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Sunroy. As we all know, Mountain Guard is the Nickel Sunroy. Most of the defense, we've made that all the clearer. I think we've had enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Mountain Guard. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will not hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honour, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? I will now announce... Objection! There is only one way for me to try this trial out. The only thing I have left is one dirty trick. Your Honour, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that was the same figurine that was found at our guard mansion. However, it's possible that this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I am saying is it's possible for a different person to be Dekiller's real client. Real fine. Yeah. That's all you have. 
Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say to kill his real client, therefore it's a real murderer? Adrian Andrews? Yeah, we already knew she tried to frame Mountain Girl to the crime by wearing a spare nickel sunrise costume. Oh, then the nickel sunrise, oh, that could have been very well, Mrs. Andrews. But what about Mr. Ongard? If you'll please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Ongard's mansion, well they trapped by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? Can I begin to count the flaws in the defence's logic? Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. What's with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell on guard, did it? I can't believe the defence would go so far as to build a guilt onto someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not so petty, it's murder of all things. This is to save my life, to save my life. Even if the whole world goes against me. I can't give this is one fight I can't give up on. Order, order, order! All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honour, for the benefit of the defence, I'm willing to play along with his what if game. His what if game, Mr. Edward. Prosecution is prepared to challenge defence's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered. What would this criminal want with a little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially bring that bear to on guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows the significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honour, prosecutor calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? Quite simply, Your Honour, Miss Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well, then the court will take a short 10 minute recess. Prosecutor will prep its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honour. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? I never thought in your desperation you tried to pin the guilt onto Adrian. I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Beck! Pearls, where's Mia? I I don't know. A strong power suddenly called her away. A strong power? Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is from Gunshow. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. Just barely found something to hold that latch onto. Yeah, that's good, pal. What about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where to kill him and Maya are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but what? We don't have any more time. Because I want even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya is being rescued. If I just run out of luck this time, it's all our hope for naught. A tent. Uh, a tent? I could see a circus tent. Mia, it looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. It was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gunshow. So a circus in town right now. There's only one pal, very big circus. Myra is somewhere within a 300 foot radius of the main tent. What? Okay, all on the set, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map, about 300 foot radius from the main tent. Hurry! And, and, I can see a mailbox under the window just outside. Gum shoot, there's also a mailbox. Okay, what else? Well, ask me, I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. I felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so? I heard her. Old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't oh, let your battery go. You okay, pal? Yeah, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Come shoot, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. 
I can do this, I just have to make this trial last a little longer. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to the client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Ms. Andrews? Of course I have. Have you seen it before? That's right, it's only natural that the witness has. Ms. Andrews, could you please enlighten the court of the bear's secrets? Alright. Why, why does she... Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its centre is a small cavity, just a small enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell it's just a small jewellery box just by looking at it. So this figurine is a container of sorts, is it? Yeah, this can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, this is superb craftsmanship. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Looks like there really was something to that bear after all. A puzzle? That's right. Hmm, but it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? So you can take it apart, and how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right and then push it in. Oh yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, oh this is most interesting. Boy in his new toy, it's like he's five all over again. Oh, don't mind me, go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this, this was a present from you. That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear so I thought it would be perfect for the barn. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. So who exactly knew how to solve the puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland, so I doubt that there are many people with the same bear in this country. Or it looks like it would be easily broken, especially if someone wants to get out what's inside. Well, it's a toy. It can never be the same again once it's been broken. Who else knows this bear is actually a small container? Or jewellery box? I never told anyone. And as long as one well, never told anyone either, and only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? And of course that means Mr. On Guard didn't know, right? Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realise that there is one very important fact we've uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewellery box. Hmm. Now that we've agreed to this point, there's only one logical question that comes next, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we're going to find out next. Witness. Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. There's painful silence. All eyes are on Miss Andrews as she now solves the puzzle. Takes the bear apart. 
Was is that? Is this what you wanted? What is that? Let's look at no. I don't think we need to guess at what this is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. A suicide note? A suicide note left by Juan Carida's former manager, Celeste Impact. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden, hidden by the victim, Juan Carida himself. Seems Celeste Impact had very beautiful handwriting, and she just as beautifully signed her own name on the document. So it's definitely the note she left before she committed suicide. Order! Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard it all about it from Guam. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But I couldn't find it anywhere. It's already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Redworth's pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, What's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least that's what I think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. I was going to burn it, for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honour, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. Judge's voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In the notes left impacts left us left that happened to her. That being used and thrown away by on guard. That being engaged to Carida and on guard's role in destroying that. About how she decided in her despair to end it all. And that's all Miss Impacts had to say. <laughs> Only one thing I'd like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. On Guard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honour, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word. Mr. On Guard values above all else the refreshing of the Supreme Breeze image, which is why we, he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. There's no room for doubt here. Mr. Killer's client's goal was to obtain a suicide note, and the only person who needed that this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found in the defendant's house. Seems to have come to the truth at last. And its motives were entirely selfish. He just has no sympathy from anyone. How am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Don't she hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence. Figuring in the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of this situation through one of those. Gavel already in the judge's hand, Phoenix. Hurry! Suicide note or the figuring which one really should I pursue? Please wait, Your Honour. Yeah, so it's correct. That seems strange. In fact, I think there's a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Carida until the night of the murder. If that's the case, I think that on guard could not have known what was written on this note. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly, but I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. No one in their right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. Order, order. You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on that one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Huh? Defence seems to be in love with wishing more to despair upon itself. I'd like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It's a very small video camera, Your Honour. type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the? I thought that spy camera was in my possession. Matt on guard and the victim both thought the other was their biggest rival. 
He went so far as to use his type of item to find each other's weaknesses. Run. Victim one, Karita was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt on guard. Order, order, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you're confused, Mr. Wright. Probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuff bears eye. But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this. Gumshoe's bug sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Mom Bob's fingerprints were on there? Well, Phoenix. Looks like this camera's been all over the place, huh? Let's put six that evidence. I think this is the end. Fairly obvious that Mr. Mon on guard at the end of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. Not anything to come to that. Phoenix. Yes, Chief. Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What you're going to do next is running away like a frightened child with it. I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting a lid on this case. But in his eagerness to prove his point, he got one important thing. What was it, Mia? Piece of evidence that he really should investigate. To me, he should investigate. I really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded. But for now, I'm not remembering to look into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence Mia is talking about? I figure out what it is, it still needs to be like the turn. I have an objection, Your Honour. Mm, that was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! Your Honour, the defence has no intention of letting this go that easily. We're going to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honour. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me that I forgot something? You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. There's something you should really look up. That is Miss Impact's suicide note, right? Who knows? I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside the bear, but this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting of the suicide note has yet to be analysed. Oh! So, as to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impact or not, that has yet to be remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting. Mr. Wright, you aren't saying the suicide note is a fake. Miss Andrews, you were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Ongar. You say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into the bear. How dare you! Your Honour, the defence is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There's no evidence linking the witness to this suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who solved the puzzle is the witness herself. Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt on guard. I, I did no such thing. Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, Show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented the scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? This is as if the defence stated handwriting is yet to be analysed. That's the case. It seems that yet again we've reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impossible? That's impossible! Some good phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think I will be physically able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defence further investigate. I think we've reached the end of the line.
course I'll sell Gumption. I have Gumption. What is with him? What's with that side? Where's my? What happened to the killer? The uh, the gold bag. What? I'm sorry, pal. Really am. Um, Lord Super Slug, I'm sorry. There is some way to make it over to you, I really do. Hey, what's going on? They found his eye date, pal. But two of them were already gone. This is terrible. Well, I'm gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry, just need a little more time. But don't tell me we don't we don't have any more. Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Is it right? I can't. For us to come this far around. Oh, wait, what is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I can't do that. Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. You want to enter today's procedures? You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! Mr. Edgeworth, please, you will boy us some more time. Court is in session. I'm sorry, Your Honor, you were saying. Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am allowed to do this, however, it appears I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. At this time, I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Rongard's motive for murder was has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But, Your Honour, it's not as if Mr. Rongard monitored Mr. Corrida 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place that Mr. Rongard didn't know of. We're right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery in her own place? <sighs> order, 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 Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. Uh, as I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you're not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Rongard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honour, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. Edgeworth stuttering, this is not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the questions of who was it that hired Shelley to kill her to commit murder? That's impossible. Who in the... No such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is... it's... um... Yes, go on, who is it? The man himself, Mr. Shelley D. Killer. Oh, Mr. D. Killer. Wait, Shelley D. Killer? Uh, you mean the killer? Uh, I mean the assassin? Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here? To the witness stand? Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognise that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright. Yes? Is this alright with you? Do I have a choice here? Can't really do much else to drag this trial out. Defence has no objections, Your Honour. I wonder if it really is alright to do this. Very well then, the prosecution calls its witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way left to us? Now then, witness, um, your name and your occupation, please. Very good, sir. My name is Shelley Tequila. And I'm a professional assassin. I, s I say, what is going on here? Your Honour? How can you remain so calm? What is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honour, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. De Killer will testify to this court. So this is, must be what the, that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. I hope not, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. DeKiller himself. Witness, please present some sort of proof you are in fact Shelley DeKiller. I understand. Please wait a second. 
I'm so hungry. Maya! Maya! Our voice! Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defence has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the killer. And it looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Wow, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so... Now then, witness. There is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Corrida, is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corrida. Now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, yeah, not a, a bad dream. Shelley de Killer, what is he going to say? There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I'm here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Hmm, Mr. De Killer seems to be a very kind of man. I don't want to say he seems to be mocking us. While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honour, Mr. De Killer is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself, eh? Hmm, there seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honour. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. Trust between you and your client? I prefer my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. And why? That is why you're testifying in this manner? This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the particular name so my clients can trust me. But can someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Yes? That person wouldn't be in my clan for very long. They would certainly... That's enough! Please, no more! Very well. It was only a hypothetical anyway. That seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of a client. I think this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You... you who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now, excuse me, but would you care to die? Ah, uh, no, no, I uh, didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. Trust between you and your client? I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. These are the roles and duties an assassin's client are to carry out. I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person. I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone, do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think, really. In that case, I believe I'm prepared to disclose the information you seek. You've made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we're ready. Excellent. Now that I do believe it's about time I reveal the name of my client. Don't you agree? What is it? 
Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida? That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. Witness! That's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. What? This can't be on the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. Dekeur just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? Sure, in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. Dekeur told him a different name. And that's on guard, perhaps? Yeah. This, this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious life about you were the one who summoned this witness. Ah. You shitty killer. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is not on guard. Am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. Hmm. Wow. All of a sudden it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. Prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided a suicide note which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. Jekyll's client has, who requested the murder was not the defendant after all. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Ungard is innocent. I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please continue your discussion and call me when you've reached a verdict. Fair enough, please bring Mr. Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? For the way this is going on, God will be found innocent. It's maybe our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but. But Edgeworth is right, the killer is lying. One guard, my client, I know he's guilty. Can I live on myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecutor's own witness would have absolved the defendant? Your Honour, the prosecution requests permission to qu further question this witness. Shelley D. Killer is certainly lying under oath. Hmm, it wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please, that test we just know it was all one big lie. Ms. Andrews. Suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. Dekeler himself is suicide, he named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there's quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife unbuttoned, donning the nickel samurai costume. But that's, that's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste impact was a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted a revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want both dead. No, Mr. Wright. You, you know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is. Tell them. Please, help me. Yes, I know the truth. Yes, Your Honour. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defence for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? Phoenix? I can't do it, me. I can't accept I'm not guilty. You're a lawyer. I know. But, but Matt and Gard is a killer, a murderer. I can't. I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I'm no better than on guard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact. But it is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have got an on guard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'll be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I, I trust him? Yes, you do. Mr. Write your opinion, please. Defence requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. Dekiller. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? 
Right. But, but the witness has cleared your client for his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. See through witnesses' lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honour. There's still one more, more evidence to look at. I'm sure that once those pieces were here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Very well, the trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. Dicola. Right away, Your Honour. Has the verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more about all you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we'd like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are, usually done. What is he talking about, usually done? Well, what shall I have him testify about now? Mr. D. Killer, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You lead your people in your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? As I've already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is someone tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime, while well, pretending to be for the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and the butter. That act is what I am referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. Hmm. This is the most unexpected turn of events for the um, fifth time now. However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Just a second, Your Honour. Yes, Mr. Redworth? We stopped the cross examination today, but you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honour, defence will question the witness, so I have a choice here. Uh, why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defence's case. If you scrutinise the testimony, then they're not exposed to the lies in that oh-so-beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That means two of us. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. D. Killer. What is the meaning of this attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room, your client had no idea that Juan Carrillo had been murdered. But how? How do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honour. The glass? Mr. D. Killer's supposed client thought Mr. Creed had only fainted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honour. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? Isn't it a waste of time to ask such about such a minor detail? It is not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client as you claim, then your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Corrida's death. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. How strange. Yes. Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, uh, sorry. Well, that was an awfully weak objection for the two of you. Anyway, I'm positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. Prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. 
Very well. Right now I have to buy some more time. While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here, I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. There was a request for my service on the night of the award ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalise a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made no mistakes. Mm, so you physically met your client? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. to write your cross-examination, please. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? that was, what was with the brief pause? Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I've never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? It's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak of the client while looking them in the eye. Well, Mr. Wright, does Desperate now have any importance? Of course, it was very important, Your Honour. If Mr. D. Killer had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he's mistaken. Hmm, so you're saying that this client really was Adrian Andrews? Ah, um, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. Uh, so, lost, who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix, think carefully and relax. Oh, no. The witness, please continue. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I've already told you, Mr. Wright, I did. It's only through talking with him face to face that I've begun to trust him. Well, I'm Mr. Wright. I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honour, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Oh, really? If that's the case, witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. Well, the moment I saw him, I thought I can trust this person as a client. I'd like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, that is an impossible ability. What? Show you to kill her. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up about her. So, what is the issue? But what did you say just now about her? If you have ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you she is a woman. Oh. Order, order in the court, Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following. He always meets face to face with his clients when taking their request. But he's never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. Dekiller's client would not have been with Adrian Andrews. Uh, 
Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is, without a doubt, a very androgynous name. Yes, I see. Unluckily for Mr. T. Killer, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' gender. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. But what? What was going on? Shelley D. Killer. This court demands an explanation. Um, I think somehow I must have mixed up this clerk with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you'd allow me to testify. Once more. I know he's just going to spout more lies. Very well, but this time please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, now I remember I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the murder of Juan Corrida and two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. Hmm, so you took this job for a letter? He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. It means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know I can't make him suspicious, but I think we're okay that like, we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Now then, let's begin the cross-examination. Two or three other things? Yes. What were these other things? Two other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm, what shall I do? Shall I let him slide with that? It really bad if I push this button the wrong way and he got mad. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney? Yes. Everything I've said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. So I wonder what has pushed you to continue with this cross-examination. Could it be that you are planning to betray your own client? That's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one... Wait! Uh-oh, this is looking really bad. I should press my luck or I have to think. This is worth pursuing. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. If it is truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. Bear figurine. Bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was as important as the actual killing. And where was the figurine? It was inside Mr. Carida's suitcase. And then what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm, this information certainly sounds important to me. Well, let's please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish. One of these was to find the bear figurine and give it to Adrian Andrews. I found this figurine at Mr. Ongard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing here? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. On Guard, I'm sure. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? So D. Killer said he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. I know somewhere in that statement there is a contradiction. And yet, I know that if I present something trivial here, he'll cut the connection on his end. If you want to make a strong point, Phoenix, you have to present strong evidence. She's right, so now what, Doctor Wright? Witness, let's go this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine, and she told you to take the bear and wait for her at Ongar Mansion. Is that correct? Yes, where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have burned with a few things incorrectly. What? 
this is a battle of wits, I can't learn from him. I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. Shall I need to kill her? If you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should not have been inside her. This item? I see where you're going. Yep, yeah, that's where I'm going. Where is everyone going to? I need to pack a suitcase. Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrews' testimony. And I was going to burn it for her sake. If even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrews' hands. I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. Order, order, order! So that's where you two were going. So by the very fact that the suicide note was still inside the bear, it tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means... It means, Your Honour, that it's impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. Oh. Order, order... Order! Uh, Mr. Phoenix right? I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You, you must wish to break your end of our agreement. No, that's not. That's enough. If that is your intention, then there is only one thing for me to do. Wait, please, gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. No, please, not that. Wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end, I may stay in my hand. Otherwise. Oh. Mr. Right, are you? Mr. Redworth? Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand the witnesses' outburst just now. Do you think there is a need to hear your testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should. It's worth it. We can't do this. Keep this up. No, I assure. Prosecution, I... What's well, come over, but even you are. Prosecution rests. What is going on around here? Prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. What? What? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is the most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. Tequila's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelley Tequila's client is Adrian Andrews. Uh, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? If I end the trial here right now, Quiet Matt on guard will be declared innocent. In his place, Adrian Andrews will be charged with murder. Is Andrews will be charged with murder? The prosecution has no further questions, and so we now hear the defence's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matt on guard, to the stand. The ice is ridiculous. I didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Huh. So, I guess even the old fuddy duddy figured me out. Mr. Ongar, what an atrocious lawyer I have. Giving his own clients up like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap. It's just as atrocious, don't you agree? Anyway, go on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice or should I save Mars life? You better get on guard the guilty sentence, okay? But if I did that, Maya will die. I say he's innocent, the result. Do I say guilty or not guilty? I'm sure he's going make someone's life is going to end. Well, he needs on what I choose. 
All right, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, your client, my old guard, is innocent. <laughs> no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer's going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. God, I can't do this. I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, my own guard, is... My, I'm sorry. My own guard is... Franziska von Karma. What are you doing here? Ow! You see now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix, right? This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off of that scrappy fool. Did you bring them, the final pieces? Do you have them? You should not. You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Isles Edward. Von Karma is put in every way. The evidence is in, in perfect condition. Don't worry about scruffy, he's fine. And his injuries are minor. All the items are inside this. What a filthy old coat this is. There's gun shoes and what his tattered rags anywhere. I apologise for its ugliness, but there was nothing else to wrap the items in. I fought long and hard this whole trial. All thought is really inside that lefty coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. You're on inside that filthy coat are the defence's final pieces of evidence. Your final evidence? This trial is already over. I do not believe that any evidence presented now will change the outcome of this trial. What? Your Honour, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I request that Miss Von Karma be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. I suppose you are right, Mr. Redworth. I grant permission to do so. However, this one obvious rule applies here. If these items do not bring up any new points, then they will not be accepted by this court. Now, Miss Von Karma, these pieces of evidence are items left by the killer during his escape from the police. Hmm, you must have been quite a rough. Yes, Your Honour. The killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere more the evidence we're about to see. There'll be something that will turn this whole situation around like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That is all we can hope for. The first item is a pistol. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with this case? Does that pistol have any relation to this case? We have yet to perform a ballistics test, so I can't say anything for certain. However, I believe it has something to do with this case, at least with me. That's the pistol that he used to shoot you, isn't it? That's what I believe, yes. Oh? I kept the bullet they removed from my shoulder as a sort of memento. I'm sure it'll be an excellent sample for the test. So that's the pistol which used to shoot Francisca. Probably not going to help us very much. The second piece of evidence is a videotape. I bet they could have took that from on guard mansion. Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there was no time to. Oh yeah. But I would speculate this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. The, the killer went back to it for it. That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. Hmm. Somehow it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Shady the killer is no ordinary man. The last piece of evidence is Bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? Was that used during the crime? Almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it, the killer was wearing this on the night of the murder. But one thing I found interesting about this uniform, and what is that? There is a button missing. 
Or this uniform. Butter. It's a very unique button. I'm sure if we were to recover it, it would provide us with an interesting clue. Hmm. That is all I have to present, Your Honor. Hmm. It's just so thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure we were... We were, we were, were we under normal circumstances? These items from Shelley to Killer's hideout would be very important clues. However, our question is not who did the killer, it is who is the client. Yes, that is correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about that. Thank you for your hard work, Ms. Von Klammer. You may step down now. Wait, Your Honour. Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. This court already has all the evidence it needs to have none of it. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix. I knew it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have to make that miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But no matter how you think about it, it's... it's Try, for my sake. Just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of this situation for us. Two. The first. Make on guard wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. On guard himself wishes to be convicted. And he'll let his hostage go. That may be true, but... That's asking me to do the impossible. The second way... Forced the killer to end his contract with Vanguard. If the killer were to no longer think of Vanguard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible. He's a man who values his duty towards his clients above all else. I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first. If you could make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. The bigger problem is, the judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. Pieces he was just shown, he's not accepting them. Phoenix, think things through from the other side. Isn't that what has always worked for us? The other side, wait, does she mean, you mean to turn things around? Phoenix, the judge says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? Person who needs the evidence. Defense, prosecution, and the judge. We've seen all the pieces of evidence. And that is how we have come to know the truth. But there is one person who's yet to see them all. That person does not know the truth. That truth, it may be what will bring about the miracle in the end. There are no objections this time, correct? Now then, I'll pronounce my verdict. Why don't we all respectfully sit back and listen, kids? I've already told you, Mr. Wright, this court does not need any more evidence. I'm not saying it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honour. Then you want to show the evidence to that person? Yes, Your Honour. Please, Your Honour. Mr. Wright, for you to ask with such passion, I will grant you one chance. One chance? You show your evidence who you think is the right person. That's impossible. To turn this situation around in one try? One try? That is all I will commit. I have to try to remember. Everything that's happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix. Think. There must be a way to save Maya while taking on guard down at the same time. Now that Mr. Wright, let's not waste any more time. Who would you like to show the evidence to? I see, and now, tell us what one piece of evidence you'd like to show this person. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, um, I think there's some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. Alright, it looks like I managed to convince him. Maya, she's okay, right? Didn't I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me one piece of evidence. Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. I thought so. I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. Do you know the contents of this tape? I was sternly told by my client not to watch it, so 
So I have absolutely no idea. Actually, you are on this tape. Me? There was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true, Mr. Wright? Who, who was it that planted the camera? Well, the only person who could have planted the camera at the scene of the crime. It'd be your client, naturally. That, that was Adrian Andrews. Be quiet and listen, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Your client specified a place to tie for you, isn't that right? Yes. That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright? Why would my client do such a thing? I would like to know why. Why did my Glass fill the crime scene? The reason why you did the uh, ticket out of this whole mess. There's only one reason why your client would secretly fill the scene, eh? Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. At least of all assassins. Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. What do you have to say to that, Shady Killer? It looks like... It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yes, by a natural. That's the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who only thinks and plots of how to use the people around them protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Yes. You told us one thing numerous times during your testimony. You said that you detest traitors most of all. Yes, that is right. What if that traitor was your own client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then... That client would become my next target. For the honour of the de killer name, even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. I see. That's all I wanted to know. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target. Ah, I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright? Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you your precious item. What the? I'm not an item! My, I thought I'd never see you again. Oh, thank goodness. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion. However, I... Actually, I am sort of... I don't quite know what just happened. Miss Volcarma, where did she stop? She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's finally down, hand, time to hand out a verdict. Mr. On Guard, it looks like somehow you got what you wanted. You'll finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly, you should be happy. But before that, I'd like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watch this video. Uh, help me? Now then, Your Honour, the verdict, if you please. It goes alright with you, Mr. Wright. We are finally reaching the end of a very long battle, whether he's convicted or acquitted, and they're safe from now. Go on, Phoenix, please, whichever way your head tells you. Right, Chief. Congratulations, Mr. Metalguard. Please make sure to save every moment what little time you have left. Your Honour, as always, defence pleas is not guilty. Very well. The court finds the defendant Metalguard. Please wait. What's the matter? If I if I get a not guilty, I'll be killed. I I'm I'm. 
No. I'm guilty. As always, if it's something uncovered the real truth, we I don't remember you helping out much in this. Mr. Redworth has my old guard. I've left his old karma in charge of his incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, the witness? Yes. I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. The first time I was called to the witness stand during this trial, all I felt was despair. She must be talking about the time Edgeworth really went after her. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what she did. This witness, how shall I put it? She has an illness. If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. But after that, when I was alone at the detention centre, that's the first time I really saw myself for who I am. And today, the two of you use your combined strength to convict Matt. I feel like I've finally been saved. Wow, it's the first time I've ever seen a smile. I'm really happy that you two are in charge of this case. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is this is the first time I felt comfortable with myself. Thank you so much, everyone. It looks like we have resolved everything at last. As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about, but everyone seems to be in good spirits. And that's good enough for me. That is all. This court is adjourned. You were great out there, Phoenix. What I did out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. You've got them a guilty verdict this time. But you have to look past all of that to what's really important. You now realise there is something more than just getting a not guilty. Right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think to the moments before Ms. Von Karma arrived with the final pieces of evidence. Think about the incredible decision you had to make. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defence's final statements on this matter. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. Shall I side with justice or shall I save Maya's life? My client Matt on guard is... Is he guilty or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then. And your answer? Your answer speaks to what being a lawyer means to you. Right, Edgeworth. I have good news. Myra is now safe in police custody. Really? Pearls, you're telling us the truth right, Mr Edgeworth? Yes, but she's quite safe. He's on the way here as we speak in the patrol car. Oh, I missed it, Maya. I missed it, Maya. Say, did you really do, Mr. Link? How she punches the set to be hard for a kid. I believed in you. I kept saying to myself, Mr. Link will save her. Mr. Link will save her. Ah, uh, thanks. Oh, what's wrong? Miss Von Karma. Um, about earlier, thanks. Ow! Why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix? Right. You, you lost. Your perfect win record has now been crushed. And yet, you are still happy? I don't think you'll ever understand, Ms. Von Karma. How dare you? Don't worry, she may be she may in time after all. I was like that myself until a year ago. Edgeworth. For my own personal victories and for my guilty verdicts. I used every dirty trick in the book and so my win record remained spotless. But... The man appeared and stood fast against that selfish me. I fought him in my usual manner and tasted my first defeat. I felt like I'd lost everything because of that. And then... It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. And I was saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened, so I left the prosecutor's office. I left that note. Hmm. As well, as you should have, a prosecutor who ashamed himself of defeat should crawl into a hole and die. But that was not what happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realise something. 
And it was in that moment of clarity, everything began to change. What foolish nonsense. We prosecutors use anything we can to attack the defendant. But every time we did so, no matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people, that man would hold strong with his undying faith. And then, before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. What, you trust your enemy? It doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses, the truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is to fight with the knowledge we hold and everything we have. Raising the paradoxes one by one. Never easy, we claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This, I promise you. Truth? Yes, that's the reason why prosecutors and defence attorneys exist. I'm sure you knew that already, didn't you, Moat? That's why you couldn't forgive me, this man who went into hiding, isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory, who ran away into the night. Ah, oh, is this Mr. Edgeworth right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with is because I believed in the things you said to me all those years ago. And you, you betrayed your own words. That's why, when you ago, I made up my mind. I decided that the Mars Edgeworth I knew had died. At least that's what I told myself. You pathetic fool. Miss Von Karma? I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. Von Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect. Mars Edgeworth, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of becoming a Von Karma. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. Francisco threw something on the ground just now. This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to try to detect a gun to? I'll return this to the precinct later. Then there's something else. Ah, oh, isn't that Miss Von Karma's whip? I'll never set foot in a courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by this action. You should keep this right. Um, okay. Nick! Maya! Maya! Mr. Maya! Mr. Maya! Oh, Nick, I knew you'd come through. You got and got convicted like I knew you would. And on top of that, you even rescued me. But of course I did. You know I'd never desert you. But we sure passed our let this trial. You're really lucky to be standing here. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over okay. Besides, if I did croak, I'd just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost through Pearly. Is it really that easy to do something like that? Thanks a lot, Nick. Uh, don't mention it. Maya? Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Um... I'm relieved you're all right. Hey, it looks like you've made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. <laughs> all right. I think it's time we got out of this depressing place. Huh? Where are we going? Food, Nick. Food. Grub. Chow. I'm starved. I'm so hungry, even you look a nice juicy burger bun on a bun to me, Nick. You think I look a burger? I'm a prime rib, at least. Come with us, Mr. Edgeworth, please. Uh, um, if you insist. Alright, so I might be here by usual burger gun. Don't be silly, Nick. Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of my gourmet food. So, I've decided we'll have to make it up by having another feast. Another feast? Come on, Nick. Food. Hey, pal, sorry to keep you always waiting. I'm sure you're all right. Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I'd hit a telephone pole of all things. A telephone pole, and it wasn't the red light that got in. You did it again, city bar. I thought that my dear old hat was gonna give out on me, and I ain't joking. Yeah, it was more exciting than the very last episode of the Steel Samurai. Thanks. Now look here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor. Don't you reckon you bullied Mr. Rat too hard? If you don't start being a lot nastier and email, just kick it tonight. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Well, come on now, everyone get around. 
I'll go get your bitch thing about a genuine professional photographer. It's like a lot of brought this stuff in your camera. Well, pal, at least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on, tonight's all about eating, so let's chow down, pal. Amen to that, pal. Amen. You know, when you think about it, you were the one who saved the day, detective. Oh, me? You really think so? He's right. It wasn't for the free items you took. I think this trial would have had a very different ending. Oh, uh, well, you know, it's... Ho oh. ho. Uh, wait. That's odd. When I ran off with the things for to kill his eye out, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. What? Four? Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket. It was a full fight. Oh, come on, y'all. It's over. Woo, boy, I tell you. We are something else. Between getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped. Never a dull moment with you, huh? How do you think? Why does she look so happy about that? But being shut away for two whole days, weren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. I felt so hopeless. So to keep my mind off things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you had a rough gal. Where's the picture, yes? Yeah, I want to see, I want to see Mr. Meyer's picture. Um, you know, I don't know where it went. Oh, that's too bad. Well, it's alright. It wasn't anything important anyway. Uh, oh, it sure is nice to find you seeing both smiling again. Hmm, what is it, Edward? This thing is picking something up. Oh, that's, that's Miss Von Karma's receiver. Thanks for her, I had the most awful experience of my life, sir. Can't believe she's like a tracking device on me. That's odd, even though you're standing right here. Tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh, it probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Ah, but Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't eaten anything yet. You've eaten way too much, you glutton. I had fun tonight, now if you'll excuse me. Wait, what? I just want to say thanks, Edward, if you really saved me up there. Hm. If anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words are though not enough here. I wonder if there's anything I can give to express how I feel. this. Thanks to you. It's all thanks to you two. You and her. You don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. It looks like Mr. Edgeworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Mr. Meyer. Mm, yes, Pearly. I guess you two threw out being lovey dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick. I mean... Pearly, would you cut it already? You're embarrassing me. Um, anyway, so who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask. Everyone say thank you to Nick. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm kind of at the point where I can't even buy this noodle, pal. But why don't we put your name on the bill? Huh? Oh? Yeah, I got my situation just like that myself. It's a camera shop in this hotel, see? I just got myself. It's got beer here. It better be anyhow for $3,000. Three uh, uh? I think I reckon you buy it for me since it's on your tab and all. Uh, uh, what? Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick. Why do I feel like suddenly feel like screaming? Ah, oh, I don't need help back now, I hear. Yeah, but I'll talk it all out. It's going to be the first time I hear the real you. Go on, it's been a while since I heard you say it. I have been busy being a hostage and all. All right, if you say so. Where are you going, Francisca? How did you know I was here? With this? That's... I heard you were planting things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Hmm. That's just like you. I only planted that because he was always wearing it. This filthy drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. But it's going in the trash, I promise you that. 
Oh, that's right. Speaking of that, ma'am, he told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four things. Seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. He put it in here. Doesn't matter anymore. Case is already over. What are you what are going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up! You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Franziska. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what, but failure? Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius, there's no doubt about that. But, but me, I'm no genius, I've always known that. But, I, I had to be one. I had to. You may not be a genius like your father, but you are a prosecutor. You have been and always will be. No, I'm not. Not anymore. I'll even throw my whip away. Speaking of that, Wright gave me this to hold on to. Right, you knew something like this would happen, didn't you? I'm going to say this again. We prosecutors do not fight for personal honour or pride. Let you all think deeply about what you should be striking down with that whip. You haven't changed a bit. Always, always left me alone and walked on ahead without me. Miles Edgeworth, always hated you. And then, finally my chance to take my revenge on you has arrived. If I could win against that man, if I could make Phoenix right bow down in defeat, then this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. You know, I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been until today. I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews? You were going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics, isn't that right? Hmm. So then you chased after me after I left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now, side by side. But I have no intention to stop him. If you say you're going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path, then this is where we part ways, Francisca Volcano. I, I, I'm Francisca von Karma. Don't think I'm going to walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now, so you better prepare yourself, Mars Edgeworth. Phoenix Wright. One day, someday, I'm sure we'll meet again in the battle. Until then, this last piece of evidence that never made it to you, I'll take good care of this fourth piece. So I can give it to you when at last we meet again. <laughs>